Yes, hello once again. Welcome back to your number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel, uh, where we uh, take a look at another uh, famous classic dirt bike from uh, back in the day. Now, it's been quite a while since we've done anything uh, with the uh, Michael uh, manufacturer, so we're going to put that right with this next uh, video posting. But before we do, I'd just like to say a quick thanks to all of the brand new subscribers who have just recently signed up to CDB uh, TV, which uh, takes us quite nicely heading towards that 19,000 uh, subscribers uh, total. So thanks once again to everybody out there who are continuing uh, to support uh, my channel. So right now, down to business, uh, as I said, now we're going to take a look at uh, a lovely uh, twin shock uh, Michael from uh, 1981. And uh, this particular bike here isn't exactly your uh, original uh, machine from that day, but uh, nevertheless, it's a great uh, rendition of what can be done with these uh, twin shock Michael machines. So without any further delay, let's jump straight into that video and take a look at Robert Smith's 1981 Mega 2 490 Michael. Now this featured uh, bike uh, was a machine that I posted on my YouTube channel some years back uh, and in fact had actually uh, forgotten all about it until uh, one of my channel subscribers had pointed it out that it was uh, quite an interesting uh, looking bike due to the fact that it was somewhat different from the normal uh, 490 Michaels uh, of its day. But when I posted that original video uh, at that point, I never actually added any information about the bike. I just, I think it was, I just used a pretty lame soundtrack as the backing uh, to that uh, original uh, video. So we're going to put that to rights now in this uh, updated version and hopefully uh, the subscriber who requested it will be uh, pleased enough uh, with the result. Now I expect that uh, this bike uh, needs uh, no introduction as to its make or model because it's obviously uh, a 1981 490 Michael uh, Mega 2 but uh, naturally uh, not in your normal uh, Michael Red but this time all decked out in this uh, black livery which will uh, more than likely have your Michael purists uh, shouting expletives at their screens at the moment seeing their beloved uh, red racers uh, desecrated in black but uh, for me personally I still think that this bike uh, looks great in the black frame and uh, the bodywork just uh, seems to fit in perfectly with the alloy engine and those uh, gold uh, coloured wheels. So anyhow, back to the story of this unique and unusually coloured uh, machine. Now the bike it belongs to Scottish motocross racer Robert Smith, who uh, raced these uh, 490 Mega 2s in his native Scotland and uh, at a few other events in the north of England. But although uh, this bike uh, was originally in its stock 1980 Michael Red up until uh, 2017. The actual impetus for Robert uh, to give the bike a completely new look uh, all really came about when he suffered uh, a racing injury halfway through that uh, 2017 uh, racing season. And because uh, Robert knew that it was going to be uh, one of those injuries that was going to keep him out of action uh, for quite some time, he had to have something to occupy his time and keep up his interest in the sport. And it was then that he decided just to strip his big Michael down to its bare bones and give it a completely different look from its original red. And what we're looking at here is the end result. But nowadays, as you know, it's quite common to see these iconic 490s decked out in various different colours from their 1981 factory red and I've already come across examples of these big Michaels in uh, blue and yellow and even white and a few other uh, various colours of the rainbow so to see one here with this black paint in livery isn't exactly uh, something new but the saving grace here is that uh, Roberts uh, resisted 
the temptation to go completely uh, back to black and uh, cover those uh, lovely gold wheels with hideous uh, black paint, which also seems to be uh, the latest trend these days when it comes to restoring or refurbishing iconic uh, twin shot racers uh, such as these. But, uh, as you'd expect, uh, the very first thing that Robert did after stripping the bike down was to check uh, the chassis uh, for any damage, just to see if there were uh, any repairs uh, needing done before. He then uh, got the local uh, sandblasters uh, to remove uh, all the old uh, lovely Michael Red paint, which uh, then uh, took the frame back uh, to its bare metal so that the paint shop could then uh, powder coat it in this uh, lush, thick uh, black colour. But as you'd expect, the uh, frame and the rear swing arm as well both received uh, the exact same treatment. And as you can see, after uh, the powder coating was all uh, baked in the industrial oven for a short time, it all turned out uh, superbly, uh, as uh, you can see. And so while all that uh, paint prepping and uh, refurbishing of the frame and swing arm uh, was continuing, then uh, Robert began work on the 490's uh, reed valve motor and he completely stripped the engine down to its bare crankcases and then uh, checked uh, what could be reused and what needed uh, replacing. And although uh, I was never actually given a list of uh, what was done internally, to this engine. Uh, once it was rebuilt, it was basically a, a brand new uh, Michael motor with uh, new bearings, seals, gaskets, uh, a reboard barrel and piston, etc, etc. So everything that needed done uh, was all completed before putting the engine back into the chassis. And as you can see, Roberts kept the original uh, Bing carburetor on his four 90 engine, which I always thought were excellent uh, carburetors as long as you took the time to set them up properly with regards uh, their jettings and uh, mixture settings. Because I did race a 440 version of this uh, Michael engine back in the day and it also had a big Bing carburetor fitted onto it, which I always thought worked uh, very well. But the carburetor that's uh, fitted to uh, Robert's bike uh, drew its air uh, through a foam uh, washable filter that was inside this plastic air box. Although, uh, again in 1981, this would have been uh, red and not uh, black plastic as we have here. But as I uh, mentioned previously, this is the more uh, desirable uh, reed valve 490 motor and not the piston port version, uh, which was also a good uh, power plant, although these uh, reed valvers tended uh, to not suffer uh, from the bogging down effect that you got uh, going into the slow corners uh, with the piston uh, porters if you didn't uh, keep those revs up. But these uh, reed valve 490s uh, did certainly run uh, a lot cleaner and a lot smoother than those uh, older uh, piston porters. But uh, as you can see, our newly refurbished 490 power plant is now uh, shining like a brand new pin after all uh, the casings were vapor blasted to remove all those years of uh, racing grime. So it's certainly looking good and ready to take to the track uh, once again. Now, another little upgrade on the original plastic uh, Michael part was this uh, CNC machined uh, alloy ignition cover, which, uh, as I remember, I think was uh, supplied through Bill Brown's uh, Michael Max or uh, Wolfsport uh, company uh, back in the day. But these were very high quality parts and certainly uh, gave your old uh, Michael motor uh, a completely different look from the stock black or red plastic part that came from the factory. And a couple of more upgrades that were done on Robert's Black Beauty was this alloy rear brake pedal which replaced the original 
uh, Michael Steel item. And those uh, extra wide steel footrests are uh, another good part to, to fit to any uh, Michael model because uh, these much wider uh, pegs will give the rider's feet uh, a lot more support than those uh, skinny efforts that Michael uh, fitted to these bikes back in 1981. So you can see that these have been uh, well engineered and uh, are a simple uh, bolt-on replacement for the stock uh, 81. Uh, for 90 foot rests. Although I'm certainly not going to sit here lecturing you about how fantastic and uh, scary quick these 490 engines are because I'm pretty sure that you'll already uh, know that fact uh, by now but it's not until you actually strip one of these engines down that you can see the ingenuity of those uh, micro engineers and the simplicity of this motor's construction because let's face it uh, what uh, other motorcycle manufacturer would use uh, beveled washers uh, as clutch springs uh, which were uh, just one of the interesting design features on this uh, particular engine but when this 490 two-stroke motor was all set up and running correctly then there wasn't much that would pass it uh, on the racetrack. And so as we move on to the bike's uh, front suspension, which uh, are still uh, the original uh, Michael forks that are fitted to our 490. And these, uh, as you'd expect, uh, were also stripped and fully refurbished with uh, brand new seals and oil, etc. So these are all good to go again and ready for another uh, racing season. But these uh, rubber gaiters that are fitted uh, on the fork uh, stanchions uh, weren't originally uh, fitted to these 490s uh, back in 1981, but they'll certainly help uh, to keep dust, uh, dirt and moisture from damaging uh, those delicate uh, fork legs and uh, their fork seals. And uh, once again, we have uh, the original uh, front drum brake uh, on our 81 Michael, which uh, wasn't the greatest stopper on the planet uh, back then, but it was still good enough to help uh, slow the bike down uh, whenever it was required. But on this other side of the hub, the original uh, Michael brake backplate's been replaced by uh, yet another uh, Michael Max uh, Bill Brown supplied part, which uh, again is just a straight uh, bolt-on uh, replacement to the stock uh, Michael original. And as we move on to the rear wheel, it's uh, quite a similar uh, setup uh, to the front with another uh, nicely engineered uh, Michael Max uh, CNC gold anodized part, which of course replaced that uh, super thin alloy rear brake Michael part from 1981 that looked like it was uh, made from a flattened Coke can because it was just uh, so thin. But this new part and of course that new rear drive sprocket uh, certainly uh, give our 490 a brand new look from that uh, 1981 uh, Michael original. So by now you've probably uh, more than likely guessed that both the front and the rear wheels on Robert's bike are brand new uh, Tagasago XL gold uh, anodized alloy replacements to the stock uh, 1981 wheels. And these uh, wheels here were fully rebuilt with heavy duty spokes onto the original uh, 490s hubs. Now, for some strange reason, this black, yellow and gold theme of this bike just seems uh, to go together perfectly. But uh, as I said earlier, uh, thank God that Roberts uh, resisted the temptation uh, to put black rims uh, onto this bike, which uh, would certainly have spoiled the look of what uh, is still a cracking uh, looking machine. But as we move uh, on to the rear suspension on our 81 uh, Michael, now uh, Robert's uh, certainly not scrimped 
uh, when it came to fitting uh, a decent pair of rear shocks onto his bike and he's uh, gone with this pair of uh, top quality uh, Swedish made Olin's uh, piggyback units but these Olin's are uh, a perfect choice for these uh, mega 2490s because they're highly tunable with regards their rebound and their damping and they're also uh, fully adjustable for the rider's uh, personal weight as well and they can also uh, be completely dismantled if they were ever needing uh, any servicing uh, or uh, repair. And of course, uh, the other uh, plus point is uh, with these suspension uh, systems is that these Olin's uh, twin shocks uh, will be much better quality than the Italian-made uh, Corti Cosso shocks that Michael uh, bolted onto these bikes way back in 1981. Now, another quite handy accessory that's fitted onto Robert's Michael is uh, this chain guard from Racebase, which is uh, bolted on just to try and help prevent uh, the rear drive chain from rubbing up against uh, those uh, rear shock springs, which always uh, seemed to be a bit of a problem on these bikes because the chain did uh, run uh, very close uh, to the springs and with the up and down movement, of the back of the bike and in severe cases uh, this chain could certainly uh, do a lot more damage than simply take the paint off uh, of those springs. Now you're never uh, going to still find uh, an original uh, 1981 490 uh, Mega 2 these days still sporting its 42 year old original exhaust expansion chamber and uh, this part here on Robert's bike is uh, just a straightforward uh, bolt-on replacement from uh, Derek Elwell pipes at uh, DEP and you can see that this pipe's already seen some track action with its uh, battle-scarred uh, dings and dents but uh, certainly nothing unusual for a big Michael when you consider uh, where this pipe's uh, actually placed uh, on the bike, although hopefully uh, Robert's uh, already noticed uh, this uh, quite loose exhaust pipe hanger nut on the top of its uh, rubber mounting because uh, we certainly don't want uh, that pipe coming loose uh, halfway uh, through a race. And uh, here at the rear of the bike I'm pretty sure that this uh, alloy tailpipe is yet another uh, DEP uh, product because uh, as you know it was uh, a kind of round shaped uh, heavy mild steel tailpipe that would have been fixed here uh, back in 1981 so this alloy replacement uh, will also help uh, reduce uh, the weight of uh, the big Michael uh, 490 but if you stick around uh, to the end of this video we'll see if we can get Robert to let you hear uh, this bike uh, firing up and so moving on to the big Michael's uh, fuel tank, which as you can see is black and uh, I don't know if this has uh, been a red uh, fuel tank that's had some kind of process performed on it to change its colour because uh, I just always assumed that most of these uh, 81 Michael tanks only came in uh, Michael red and uh, to be fair, uh, I've already seen a couple of these 81 fuel tanks in blue as well so uh, who knows maybe you can get them in every color uh, of the rainbow but these uh, nice yellow graphics uh, certainly stand out against that black uh, background which it uh, has to be said it uh, does uh, give this bike a very uh, distinctive look although there is uh, one other point to consider when we're talking about these uh, fuel tanks is that uh, because this uh, fuel tap here is made by Clark uh, that uh, black plastic fuel tank could also uh, be one of their products because uh, Clark uh, do make replacement fuel cells uh, for these old uh, Michaels so it follows that uh, this may even uh, be the answer uh, to uh, the black fuel cell. And uh, even these uh, black replica 490 Mega 2 side panels 
It could also be uh, one of Clark's uh, plastic products, although, uh, as I said, I was never given any information or any list of parts uh, when I filmed the bike uh, on the day. So who knows, they might, these might even uh, be supplied by a Michael parts supplier uh, like Raceface or maybe some other uh, bike parts uh, manufacturer. And uh, the big 490 uh, Michael seat is uh, basically the original uh, 81 seat basin foam insert. And uh, to finish it off, it's been treated to a brand new uh, seat cover in black, of course, as the original bikes were uh, back in 1981. But these parts here, like uh, these seat covers, are uh, relatively easy enough to source these days as there are plenty uh, manufacturers uh, making these uh, micro seat covers in this uh, modern day. And so as we move on to the big Michaels control centre, we have a relatively uh, modern pair of rental handlebars and their grips and uh, that clutch and front brake levers are uh, good quality uh, Magura uh, ball end items that uh, of course have those uh, quite handy uh, rubber lever covers as well just to keep all of that uh, track crud from entering uh, the lever pivots and their cable ends. But uh, equally important, uh, we also have a decompressor lever here just above uh, the clutch just to try and help you get that big brute of a Michael motor uh, fired up. And also uh, an engine emergency cutoff switch there too because uh, you certainly don't want that 490 engine uh, taking you for a ride at full throttle uh, should something uh, go wrong. Although at the end of the day, original uh, red or not, it doesn't really uh, matter that much to me. And actually, uh, I quite like this uh, black livery on this bike because I think it's uh, the combination of uh, all of the black plastics, the frame and the yellow uh, graphics and uh, those gold coloured uh, alloy wheels that just seem to complement each other on this bike. And who knows, uh, maybe if Michael had uh, made a black 490 like this in 1981, it may have turned out to be quite a good seller. But Roberts certainly made a fantastic job of changing his old red coloured uh, Michael into something uh, completely uh, different. And this uh, black beauty, without question, certainly gets my vote of approval. But soon after Robert had completed building uh, the bike, it was also uh, featured in the Trials and Motocross News uh, publication at the time, which uh, was another piece of good uh, recognition for all of Robert's uh, hard work and efforts that he'd put into the bike while he was still injured and uh, unable to race. But without doubt, this is uh, certainly something uh, a little bit different here on uh, CDB uh, TV and a brand new look on what is uh, still regarded as the best open class uh, twin shock race bike ever uh, built. So that's uh, Robert Smith's uh, Black Beauty, his 1981. Uh, 490 uh, Michael uh, Mega 2. Okay, so we've had a quick walk around the bike and talked a little bit about some of the parts that have gone into putting uh, this bike together. So let's just uh, get Robert to fire the bike up and let's all have a quick listen uh, to what she sounds like. Although just a little heads up before we hear it, I think Robert uh, had a slight leak at the exhaust header pipe when he first uh, fired it up, so uh, just to make you aware of that uh, little point.
Okay, so coming up next here on CDB TV, we're going to take a look at this uh, 41 year old Italian 1980 Ancelotti uh, 250. Now, before you say it, this bike's never been restored or even uh, repainted, and in fact, it's never even had a drop of fuel uh, put in its tank since 1980 because this is a brand new, unused bike uh, from that year that's uh, never even. Uh, been started. So if you want to take a look at a genuine uh, motocross timepiece, then make sure that you retune or subscribe to my channel because this is an exceptionally rare and original uh, race bike uh, from that year. So until the next time, thanks for taking the time to view my video content and from all of us here at Classic Dirt Bike TV for the time being, it's goodbye for now.